How do you think things are going right now? I am a little bit worried about the bot lane. It's Young Ben. I've been having a lot of complaints from the other players about his conduct, and we would like to take him off the active roster. Hearing from Coach and Mark that people were having hard time because of me, that was the last thing that I was intentionally doing. Youngman and I, we had some turmoil recently. People are scared to call out Youngbin. Coach Ben and I sensed that we needed to make a change. We all want to hoist the Collegiate Championship trophy. One of the most important parts of getting people to work well together is to understand just how very similar they are. UCI is a week away from its match versus UC Berkeley in the Western Conference playoffs. And after a contentious end to the regular season, the team is once again whole. Youngbin was benched for three weeks to wrap up the regular season. The decision to let people cool down, I think, was a good one. Let some of that stress die down. And so Youngbin got to focus on his relationships with his teammates, how they view him. And so I think he's learned a little bit on the empathy side of things and grown that way. I got benched because of the interaction between me and my teammates. I mean, it wasn't really enjoyable to hear that you're going to get benched. I think I was pushing my teammates really hard, more than their limits. That kind of create some kind of toxicity environment for them, regardless of my intention. I think Lou Vermeer was most impacted by me. I wrote a letter to Lou Vermeer, and I told him that I owe him an apology for harassing him. It was not my intention at all. I know he's a great player. It made me mad to see him that he's playing at really lower level. When he's at his pick, we're just going to win both international and national. Now that I'm back, I'm still focusing on improving my teammates as a player. But at the same time, I learned that there are ways to give feedback and motivating teammates in a way where they do not feel bad. Ever since he apologized to me, you know, things started to get a lot better. I feel a lot more acknowledged by him, and I feel like I actually exist to him, whereas before I didn't really feel that way. Oh, time to feed you, cat. Where are you? Hey, cat. Come in. Come here. Lubomir and Youngbin have made amends. Come on, you fat cat. Come get fatter. But the issues continue to pour on for UCI's lone graduating senior. Finals has just been kicking my ass. I got sick last week and um, it was the worst feeling ever. I felt like a grandpa and I felt like I needed a king. It was just hard for me to get up and walk. With class taking priority, Bloodwater's practice time and performance have fallen off, putting his starting spot in jeopardy. Coach told me that uh, Ethan, basically the JV support player, is a seems like a better fit for the team. Not that I don't respect Coach and his opinions, but I don't think that guy is any better than me at all. I don't think I'm being cocky saying this. I just think that I'm just way more experienced. I mean, it doesn't matter what I say. I've tried in the past. I'm just a pawn in the system. That's it. Player drama is put on hold as UCI's eSports director heads to Washington, D.C. Mark Deppi has become a coveted expert on collegiate gaming. Today, he's suiting up for Capitol Hill. Excited, I got my eSports socks on. Don't tell Riot, but these are Overwatch socks. So you've come a long way to D.C. to visit with us. Yeah. So our program started in 2016, um, we're three years old. I'm speaking today to a group of young Democratic Congressmen and women, and they are 
interested in issues related to young people and millennials, and so they have an interest in esports, and I'm going to help provide some context and understanding for them. Members of Congress, like everyone out there, sees how big esports are becoming and understands that it's important for them to know what's going on and see how they can be involved or helpful. It's a pleasure to meet you. Particularly excited to meet our local Congresswoman, Katie Porter. She represents my area and also is a faculty member at UCI. My question is about diversity in terms of a gender question. Do you think esports should be subject to something like Title IX to actually create parity in terms of gender equity investment? Yeah, we're really concerned about inclusion in esports. UCI is a young institution and we have very forward leaning campus leaders and so we're really trying to push the needle to make sure women and underrepresented people have a seat at the table. Esports is definitely booming. It's a billion dollar industry right now. Um, if they make money at that tournament, they can keep that. That's how we've done it right now. Um, our players aren't forced to be amateur, so they can stream, and if they make $20 a month on Twitch or YouTube, that's okay. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Thanks so much, Mark. The fact that this program, in part, grew out of UCI's early role in computer science education yeah. is such a part of this story. I'm excited about what you're doing. Well, cool. Well, thank you. It went really well. People were understandably excited about esports, but also really interested in making sure that we're doing something that's good for the country. Gaming truly is a microcosm of society. All of the anti bullying, gender equity initiatives we're seeing in 2019. Well, those are happening in gaming too. I was shocked when I saw participation levels in gaming were almost equal between men and women because when you look at the pro level and when you look at the highest levels of collegiate, there aren't a lot of women on those stages. Now the feeling is that's not a matter of talent, it's a matter of culture. And this is something that UCI is tackling head on, whether it's girl gamer camps or addressing these tough issues, both in the arena and at the university level. So at this point, World of Warcraft had launched. It was about a year in. Constance Steinkuhler is an internationally renowned education gaming expert. Her signature course at UCI explores topics like the impact of gaming on well-being and the role of games in society. Now, how many of you know anything about Gamergate? How many of you recognize the term? You had the most aggressive verbal online backlash you've seen in a while. I lost probably about half of my female colleagues from games. Gender and gaming is a huge topic right now. With all due respect, historically, now gender and everything is a huge topic. How do you tamp down some of the forms of harassment that you see in these very public spaces that have now emerged around game streaming? Many of UCI's gamers get a double dose of the culture conversation. In the arena, assistant esports director Kathy Chang is the architect of a new bystander training program to address online harassment, an initiative designed from personal experience. I actually grew up pretending I was a 19-year-old male teenager in Ragnarok Online and in a bunch of other games. When I started being honest about being a woman, I had two very common experiences. One of them was, you probably suck, but we're not going to draw any attention to that. And then the other common one was just feeling uncomfortable that I was there and sometimes lashing out because of that. Oh, I don't want to play with a girl. But as I kept going, I took on a lot more leadership positions and I realized that I didn't have to stand for this kind of behavior. So thanks everyone for being here. I just wanted to kind of rehash our conversation on the bystander training that we did. We talked about kind of the opportunities for us to change the culture of esports, especially at UCI. I know some of you still remember the three Ds that we learned. Direct, delegate, delegate, distract. Okay, perfect. So these are basically strategies that you can use if you see anything like a red flag or what we call a red dot is happening. Those are three different ways that you can intervene. We obviously all want to win. If we argue, it's detrimental to us as a team. So let's focus on instead of shooting all these insults, we're actually doing something productive. Is anyone else not as comfortable with direct interaction? Maybe you can share one of their solutions for what they would do. If someone used an insensitive uh, word to describe the play of one of our friends in the group. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to like address it as like, hey, you shouldn't do that, man. So instead I was just like, ah, like, and just distract, like use a loud noise to like distract. It was kind of effective. We just want to keep these conversations going. Um, obviously, if you're talking about it among yourselves, that's even better. You guys are awesome role models for our campus, so we want you to set examples and kind of make a difference 
in the esports community, even if it's beyond just competing. People in the arena know who we are, so we're considered more as like role models, and we have to hold up to that standard and not be yelling bad things. <laughs> Kathy keeps us in check, and you know, like everyone does, and um, I think it's really, really important. As the only new starter on this year's team, Avi's not just adjusting to new teammates, but living on his own for the first time. With San Diego just an hour away, some home cooking's in order before UCI's critical playoff match. While the Behars embraced their son's passion for gaming, it took some time. I think they were hesitant at first. They just thought, like, you play games short term, and then, like, what, what's next? You gonna help me make the ahi? Okay. Yep. Okay, put it here. I thought that it's damaging for the kids. They're not social, they're not talking to anybody, it hurts their school, and I was a little bit worried, but we talk to our kids a lot. Wow. 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 That was amazing. So we love telling people that our brother got he a got scholarship. full scholarship for UCI for a game. For eSports. <laughs> what did you do? The cap fell in. <laughs> His name is I'm Avi, and yes. my name in the chat room is I'm Avi's sister, and I'm very proud of it. I chat. I don't know what they're talking about, but I really try to be supportive. So I say, go Avi, go UCI. And people make fun of her, but apparently it's okay. people We're have there. been making fun of me this entire time. Yeah. Everybody eat! Come on, come on! When I think of the benefit of gaming for my son, he knows that to be good in something, you need to work hard. And he knows to put the time into it, the effort. He's more self-confident and he is very communicative. So that's why we said, you know what, let him pursue his dream and his way. How's the playoff games going? What's going on? Our next match is semifinals against UC Berkeley. Mm -hmm. and it's a good team? Uh, they're okay. Yeah. <laughs> when we lose, we're out, but like, there's no way we should be okay. There's no way we lose. While Avi's away, his teammates take a road trip of their own. The reigning League of Legends champs are being honored by their NHL neighbors, the Anaheim Ducks. Woo! Hockey game, yay! I Sports puck! Hockey. Sports puck! <laughs> oh, I know they have gears, right? Like helmets <laughs> and a stick <laughs> and a puck. They have goalies and they also fight like till they die. This is my first time seeing a sports event live in general, I think. I don't think I've ever watched a game of hockey. Do you know any other team games? Dogs is an animal name, so maybe boars. <laughs> boars? Boars? Boars is your second. That's the second animal you came up with was a I mean, boar? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, I think this is the star player of our team. We should root for this guy. Salami? So, no, no, Salami. Yes, like Salami, but with Italian an Italian BMT? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Anaheim Ducks versus San Jose Sharks. I mean, I'm pretty sure ducks just fly away from sharks, right? <laughs> ducks owners Henry and Susan Samueli support STEM education and esports through their foundation. As a beneficiary, UCI gets a sweet visit from Duck CEO Michael Schulman. So, are you guys favorite this year? Yes. 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 Yeah. There's a couple of for-profit schools in uh, St. Louis area in Baton Missouri, uh, Maryville University, and then Columbia College. These are great kids, and they're all excited. They probably never thought that they would be representing the school like an athlete. I mean, there's just a whole new generation there, and a lot of the sports owners are talking about it now. And I have a feeling we're going to fill arenas here just like we fill the hockey arena. There we go! The Jumbotron glory is short-lived. Youngbin has been up for 24 hours straight studying for exams. 
and Coachman is preoccupied with tomorrow's Western Conference semifinals. So I'm going over the match history of the team we played, we're playing against tomorrow. Basically what I'm trying to narrow in on is because UC Berkeley wasn't really one of the teams we were expecting to play, we've never really played against them. So right now I'm trying to see both what they chose to play, right, and then who's performing well. So they had a really close series with the University of British Columbia last week, right? And in the first two games, their jungler got the same pick both games, and he pretty much carried his team by himself. Then in the next two games, the team he was playing against, the team they're playing against, they took that champion away from him, and he didn't just underperform. He basically basically made his team lose. He played played so badly, right? In terms of this particular game, this champion that he played very well on, we're trying to figure out: do we want to ban it, or do we perhaps have a strategy to, to deal with it? It's very valuable, so I don't believe that there's a, such a thing as too much preparation. <laughs> the game's tomorrow, and I am more invested in us winning our match than I am in them winning their match. Therefore, here we are. It's win or go home for today's playoff match with UC Berkeley. I really don't want the end of your time at our, at our program to be getting benched in like the last quarter. That would f suck. Struggling senior Lubmir Spazov faces being replaced by freshman Ethan Song. Yeah, I was just really shocked and like, I found it really hard to believe you would put in a really inexperienced player into like, some of the hardest matches. Trust me, I have no desire to put a ro complete rookie on stage against our, our, our biggest opponents, especially since we know that Ethan has some anxieties about being on the team. I guess from our perspective is that sometimes it feels like a gamble to have you playing on that stage too. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that when you're playing your best, you're way better than anybody who plays at the collegiate level in your role. I don't know how to get that out of you sometimes. I do know that one of the ways I can get it out of you is by threatening to put somebody else in instead. I figure that might be like one of the tactics. <laughs> you are the poster child usually for what we would want a player to be like. So the idea of not having you on our team poster is unthinkable to me, but so is losing. Now is the time where we're gonna have to start putting our nose to the wheel stone. I was on edge before for like three weeks, but now my mind's on, at ease. I just get, have to worry about this for now. Uh, you shouldn't worry about it. You said yourself, you're way better than him, yeah. right? I don't know if you're really way better than him, then you don't need to worry. All right, man. All right. That's it. Let's do it. Yeah, let's get it. Let's get, let's get that some bread. Some Berkeley ass. <laughs> <laughs> let's get some bears. But the pre-match drama is only beginning. 15 minutes before UCI's playoff bout with UC Berkeley, no one's heard from Avi Behar. Not comforting. Please leave a message. I'm not gonna leave a message. If I have to leave a message, it'll be too late. <laughs> we'll just lose in our conference playoffs, it's fine. But it's not just a match. With every playoff win in league comes coveted scholarship money. Yeah, this is a six thousand dollar loss if, if we lose. Hello. Hi. You're gonna be running late? Okay. I didn't notice that the drive would be two hours. I'll probably get there around three or something. So is there any way that you could uh, possibly stall the mouse? Well, we're in our third year, and it's crazy how much, like, out-of-game skills are necessary to be successful on the team. Time management being one of the most important, whether you're setting aside time to sleep, to eat, to travel. You know, dude, we'll, we'll do everything we possibly can, but you need to get your butt over here, because it's kind of, a, a kind of a big match. I don't know if you know, know about that, so. I trust you to get here in time as best fast as you can, but we'll buy you all the time possible. Okay, okay. I'll see you when I see you. Hopefully it's before three o'clock. You'd think it would be more common sense, but at the end of the day, it's up to me and our staff to Make sure we have all the people where they need to be at the right time, and so we have to work on that. Calling Parsa, our substitute player. Uh, hopefully, we can get him to log on at the last minute. Get him, get him in our game lobby, so that we'll have five players. Otherwise, we might be stuck forfeiting our game. And uh, he's not answering either. So. Hey, Parsa, if you get this in the next 10 minutes or so, it'd be nice if you could log on to the league client. Uh, Avi is driving from San Diego and may be late. Uh, if you hear this after the time of you know, 305, then disregard. So, thank you, bye. 
So if we don't have Avi for this first game, then, well, we forfeit it. And then if we manage to lose the match from there, then the season ends. So it's pretty high stakes. You know, it's uh, worrisome. My hair is turning grayer as, I, as we speak. It's a real concern for me. He's here. He's here. Avi's here. Berkeley FF? Forfeited. They surrendered. What? <laughs> oh, I'm so mad, bro. They, they knew Avi was coming. <laughs> they knew he had his blood flowing. Good hustle, Avi. Good hustle. Forfeited. One of the players just had a major emergency and has to leave. We, they don't have five players, so they're surrendering. I wanted to practice, man. I wanted to play. Real? Maybe we can scrim them, dude. Dude, that was such a hard-fought victory. I was in traffic for an hour, man. There were like three accidents. Well, we're happy to have you here. I'm happy you're safe. Yes. Are you? I'm happy you're clean shaven. Of course. Like that's that's and a haircut. Wow. Yeah. UC Berkeley just forfeited the match. Yeah. Pretty disappointing for us. Um, we have a definitely an esports rival with Berkeley. Yeah. I came here ready to game. Nope. But I'm not gaming. <laughs> They've been a historic powerhouse in esports, and we're hoping to pay them back for for a little bit of pain they they uh, issued last year. But what happened? Huh? What if we both couldn't have players? That would be sick. They said it first. <laughs> <laughs> they gave up first. We have video evidence. We have five players. <laughs> <laughs> well, gotta let my family know I'm not playing today. A win that advances UCI to conference finals but a loss for Bloodwater. The window quickly closing on Lubmir's opportunity to prove he is starter worthy as the Anteaters march one step closer to defending their title.